Okay, we're back live at Strata Conference. I'm okay, John we're Furrier, back Silicon live Angle. at the Strata Conference. I'm John Furry, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. We're here live with theCUBE at, uh, at the Strata Conference where we're going to extract the signal from the noise. This is day one. I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org with the research uh, firm. Open source, research free, and uh, we have some recent news here and we want to cover it here on a drill down about big data. We've heard from some scientists, we heard from op uh, open source, we heard from uh, nonprofits, we heard from uh, big consulting vendors like EMC. Big data is a big business changing the world and changing society. Uh, it's creating a ton of opportunities and the big number that we're seeing is a $50 billion market. This report put out by Wikibon's own Jeff Kelly the best analyst in the business who put out the only report, the first report on market sizing, market share. Jeff Kelly, welcome back to theCUBE. Um, so, one. Thanks for having me. What's the feedback from the report? So what have you, what That's are you hearing? first, you take all the arrows, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, for doing we that. know there's some real time <laughs> wiki editing going on when, when the calls were coming in. So, so one, tell me about the report, feedback about the report first. Tell, tell, me, tell the folks out there, high level synopsis of what the report is, what the feedback has been, and what corrections and or iterations are you making? Mm -hmm. uh, well, basically we set out to size the big data market because we didn't think anybody else had done it. And, um, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. Um, so essentially, you know, the first challenge there was defining big data for the, co for the sake of, of, the, of the report. And we, took, uh, we cast a pretty wide net, um, including uh, Hadoop, but also um, other analytic tools and applications as applied to big data, um, kind of the next generation data warehouse market as well. So that's kind of uh, where we came at it. Uh, we then had a look at the, you know, not just the uh, Hadoop pure plays, but also uh, the big guys, IBM, uh, et cetera, who actually IBM came out on top uh, due largely to their wealth of kind of database options and uh, their Hadoop, uh, their adoption of Hadoop. So, so. so you included, for example. Hold on, Dave, Dave, just uh, Mark Hopkins, if he can put on the screen, for the folks out there who want to look at this report, it's wikibon.org, wikibon.org, slash big data. So you type in that URL, you put up on the screen on the, on the lower thirds if possible, just so people can, can know what the report is. That'll take you directly to the research report, the big data market size and vendor revenues. Huge report. Sorry, Dave, didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. So, so Jeff, you were going through the definition. You said you cast a pretty wide net. Right. So you included things like, obviously you're looking at hardware, software, and services, the whole enchilada. That's right. how you get to five billion in 2012. But you included things like ex Oracle's Exadata, correct? Uh, we did. Uh, all all least, of Exadata? Well, or? not all of Exadata. Uh, certainly that was one of the issues uh, some people have taken, taken issue with. Because I don't with. think all of Exadata is big data. Uh, no. Uh, we can have a little debate about well, that. Well, you mentioned uh, big data washing earlier, so um, <laughs> that might, may fall into that category. But uh, we considered a certain portion of Oracle's uh, Exadata revenue to be big data based mainly on uh, the data volumes involved, um, as well as, you know, they, it is a, a, a unique appliance um, and again, just the volumes involved, we, we thought it was fair to include a portion of their exadata revenue. Okay, so, um, and your numbers are, it's so five five $5.4 billion this year, up to $53 billion by 2017. What's that growth rate? That's a... It's a somewhere around 58%. Compound. Compound annual growth rate, yeah, between now, now and 2017. Now, you had this um, slice of that $5 billion that is uh, pure play. So you said, or, right. uh, you said uh, IBM led all, all players, and a lot of that is services, I presume, right? Uh, yeah, most and, of it on there. a lot of software in their analytics. Well, yeah, they've, they've got a lot of software. Obviously, they've made countless, it seems, uh, analytic uh, acquisitions, but also, yeah, they lead, they lead their big data play with services uh, first and so, foremost. So talk about the pure plays. Who led in the pure plays? Mm -hmm. um, well, overall, in terms of revenue, uh, was Vertica, uh, now part of HP. Um, Are they a pure play? Well, we included them in the pure plays uh, essentially, we included uh, a handful of the uh, next generation data warehouse vendors in the pure play market, uh, mainly because we feel like they were doing a lot of the innovation uh, prior to and even since the ac their acquisitions. And also, they really haven't been uh, kind of polluted, as we say in the report, by um, their acquirers at this point. Vertic has been allowed to, uh, for the most part, continue. Would wouldn't HP say we add value to our acquirees? Well, I, you know, I'll let HP speak for themselves. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> Surely would, but um, or EMC who acquired Greenplum. And mm -hmm. I think that asset. EMC number might be a bit high. What's your thoughts on EMC? I mean, Greenplum is not doing that well. I mean, 
Yeah, what else is what else is in there? So you're saying that's gr that's just pure play green plum. Isolon is not, and that's just green plum. Right, that's the green plum. I mean, green plum is around 43. Uh, EMC 43 overall. Million? Right, EMC overall, we've got uh, we we included a slice of the Isilon business as well as uh, their the, their Hadoop business, which is obviously you know really under the falls under the Green Plum uh, area uh, as well as their services. You just had Bill so Schmarzo what's your take? So. Yeah, well, Bill Smarzo basically ratified the fact that this big business in the integration with BI, which right. I would agree with, it makes a lot of business sense. Uh, can you talk about the Pure Play and or Greenfield? Because Cloudera and the Hortonworks are battling it out for, and we'll have both those companies on here, the Cube this week. So tomorrow, Cloudera is coming on, and Hortonworks is coming mm -hmm. the next day. And by the way, Cloudera yeah. helped sponsor us to get here. So shout out to our friends at Cloudera, which we love for sponsoring us. Thank you very much. Those two guys have a Greenfield, so they have no legacy. They're pure, you know, big data commodity hardware. So they're hitting the Greenfield. What are some of the Greenfield applications that you're seeing? Yeah. For those guys, yeah, and Cloudera would be the pure play Hadoop, right? So, right, you know, talk about that a little bit too. Well, essentially, uh, you know, those vendors are doing the major innovation around making Hadoop as a platform stable, enterprise ready, um, you know, making it uh, ready to to go into environments, enterprise environments where there are strict SLA requirements, uptime requirements, things like that. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, of course, but that's where they're playing a major role. Um, Cloudera, in particular, is also working very closely with a number of partners, uh, like Oracle. We'll get that's that not the, that's not the direction I was going right, Let, no, right we'll here. Get, I want to go. <laughs> <and talk> about, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but they are but they, they do they do partner with Oracle, and we'll that's talk about that we should talk about that. But they are also partnering with a lot of the big data uh, application vendors out there that are coming out uh, that are sprouting up everywhere um, these days. It seems uh, trying to make it as easy as possible for big data application vendors to apply their applications to Cloudera's Hadoop stack. So, uh, and then of course Hortonworks, we've got taking a, a little bit of a different model. They recently had a shuffle in their executive uh, Well, the guy ranks. at COO became CEO. It's not really a shuffle. Well, their CEO. I mean, everyone at Yahoo knew that he wouldn't be right. a long-term CEO, and he was publicly saying that, you know, when I interviewed when they did the spin out or the quote, walk out. So this wasn't a demotion, right? No, I mean, no, a, not at all. Yeah. I mean, the guy from Benchmark came in clearly to run the show, and that's the, clearly the way they're going, and they're going mm -hmm. full throttle, the Benchmark playbook, so. That's yeah. pretty common, right? I mean. For Benchmark, it's clear. I mean, yeah. those guys, you know. Mm -hmm. That's their playbook. They're, play they're cutthroat. They're going to go right at Cloudera, drive for second place as fast as they can, and then see what they can get from mm -hmm. there. Well, they're, you know, they, they um, confirmed or, or recommitted to their 100% open source distribution. Um, Hortonworks. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Recently, with, with when they got a little bit of press around that, uh, moving but how did Hortonworks over. respond to the massive number of Cloudera's revenues? Because, you know, the, the basic context, uh, context between Cloudera and Hortonworks right now is obviously the service revenue is Hortonworks. Cloudera has got a license with Enterprise Edition mm -hmm. and their their proprietary add-ons. Um, you know, you got to look at that and say, huh, well, know. they've they've listen, look. They don't have a product who's, who's yet. They? Hortonworks. They're yeah. putting out a, they're putting out their own Hadoop distribution, which hasn't gone GA yet, essentially. They've got their services business, which is where how they're going to make money. Uh, but they're not, uh, you know, they're still a young company. They're still, as far as we know, working with uh, Yahoo as their main customer. Uh, some work with Microsoft. Um, but they're, you know, they've got a ways to go. They've obviously got some smart people and some, some real talent there. Um, and I certainly think they can make, a, make a, a go of it. But like I said, they've got a ways to go if you look at our, our report. Um, Cloudera's got a pretty significant lead revenue-wise at this point. I mean, they definitely got the marquee proof of concepts going from what we're hearing. But it's still guys. small. I mean, we're talking about 300 million out of 5 billion, right? So there's still a lot of upside there. Right? Yeah, absolutely. What about acquisitions? I mean, are all are, are these companies going to stay private in your opinion? Um, or, what's, 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 or is there going to be a whole new slew of, based on what you're hearing at conferences like Strata, a whole new slew of startups? I mean, other is only 10, 10 million, mm -hmm. but there's got to be like, 10,000 companies in other. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, there's going to be tons and tons of big data application startups you're going to see uh, over the next, you're already seeing it, you're going to continue to see it over the next five years. Um, I think a lot of the players we have here on the pure play chart, uh, currently, you are going to see a lot of consolidation in the market. They are going to be acquired, a good number of them, especially the more successful of the, of the players, much like we saw in the BI world a few years ago, 2007, 2008, uh, much as we saw maybe last year with the next generation data warehouse vendors who we still included in this chart, Vertica, Aster, Greenplum. Um, and then we can kind of, this might be a good good segue into the Cloudera Oracle conversation. Um, we're seeing a lot of partnerships among some of the bigger, more traditional database vendors, some of these uh, Hadoop-focused 
uh, distribution vendors, Cloudera and Oracle uh, signed a deal, Teradata and Hortonworks just announced a deal, I believe earlier this week, might have been late last week. Um, so, you know, we're seeing the traditional well, got, database well, vendors. And Microsoft cut a deal with Microsoft. Hortonworks today, they reaffirmed that deal yes. in another announcement today, which I got, a, I got an email so, from. So, so guys, how's this shaking out? You got basically the, the three big guys, or three main players in the Hadoop distribution is Cloudera, Hortonworks, and, and MapR, and I guess, I, I guess LexisNexis, which isn't Hadoop, and then IBM sort of, right? So what's the landscape look like? Can we talk about that? Last time we had this conversation at Hadoop World, love to get your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. um, what you see is the, how that's all shaking up. Uh, well, the landscape in terms of the options out there, if you want to deploy yeah, an I internal mean, it, Hadoop. A, a year ago, you had Cloudera, and we had mm -hmm. Amar Awadell on last uh, Strata, February, John, and I said, what about competition? He said, hey, there, there is no competition. Right. Now look. <laughs> You've got Hortonworks. Yeah, but they had a sizable got, lead, and they had the bar. marquee proof of concepts, and they're perceived as better code, given the premium upgrade, because the premium model's totally working for Cloudera. So the horses are on the track, let's handicap them. Okay. What do you see? Uh, well, among the pure plays, you've got Cloudera, as, as we said, clearly in the lead revenue-wise, they've done uh, some a lot of successful proof of concepts, and their challenge right now is going to be to expand those into a really large uh, deployments. Um, Hortonworks, as we talked about, They've got to prove it now. They've got the they've got the talent. They've got the business model that they've settled on, and now it's their time to go. Uh, get the backing. Right. It's now that their time to go show they can make a business out of it. Um, Map Which is R, going to be purely a services business. Purely services, a technical support training type services. Um, Map are taking a slightly different approach, depending on who you ask, forking the Hadoop code or. So they would say improving it. Uh, so, well, so so let's talk about this a little bit, John. I'd love your opinion on this. I mean. Hortonworks, I, I like the strategy because it's you know pure services, but it's 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 it, it's harder to leverage services. It's harder to scale services. Um, yeah, it's harder I mean, to get like multiples, you know, five x valuation revenue multiples of services. So that's sort of one thing. What's your take on that versus say the Cloudera model where they started in services okay. and now really work, working towards software? Regarding Hortonworks, do you want me to sugarcoat it or join? No, I want I want that we okay. want. Hey, listen, this is the All cube. Right. We want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We know how it is. When everyone says join me to sugarcoat it, that means they're not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> Um, look, at Hortonworks is a great company. They have really good horses in, inside the company. Um, you know, so as we say in baseball with Schmarzo, pitching wins pennants and defense wins Super Bowls, right? You know, Hortonworks clearly has got the engineering A lot of talent. contributors. There's a lot of yeah, talent. Yeah, well, they have more contributors over there at, at Cloudera that can argue that. They can piss in the wind on that. But at the end of the day, both companies, Cloudera and Hortonworks, have killer engineering talent. Okay, and then Hortonworks also has a service contract with Yahoo, so they're also kind of still kind of collaborating, quote, with Yahoo. Separate from Yahoo, Hortonworks has got great talent. Here's the problem with Hortonworks. Services revenue is not going to cut it. They got to pivot, which I, I hate that word, but services revenue is not going to cut it. It's a total red herring. I think that's just a nice messaging for the marketplace. I think you're going to see them move very quickly with a freemium model and figure out that Cloudera and Hortonworks, on the scheme of the dollars, if the market continues to grow at this pace, and if it does, then these numbers might be still be on the small side. If they are on the small side, it's just too much money and the competition's not Caldera or Hortonworks. It's those guys against EMC, Oracle, and others. So, okay, so, so now, to me, that's the big issue, and I think Hortonworks is going to wake up and say, okay, we're solid number two with Cloudera as the new school, and from there, you'll see a lot of different stuff. Okay, happen. now you've got Cl Cloudera, who's doing a pivot, right? It was, was really primarily s uh, selling training services and Cloudera's other, never other did a services. pivot, they've always had that model. Okay, but they've yeah. always had that model, but they weren't actually executing on it until, what, a year ago, maybe? No, and they've they started always selling executing on it. On, on software? Yeah, it's always been their model. Cloudera has not changed from their mission, which has been great, which is they want to change the world, commodity hardware, Hadoop, contribution, and their business model and, was clear from day one. And the way you make money in that, in that open source world Jeff is is with your cloud error is how? Uh, well, they essentially. Uh add some proprietary tools around the management of your Hadoop cluster, uh, as well as services around managing uh, Hadoop internally at their customers' uh, sites. So essentially, that's how they're they're making money there. The code, the the core of the Hadoop distribution that they're that they uh, are are selling is, or I should say, are giving away is pure 
Apache, hundred percent. Oh, okay, so so but 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 the Enterprise Edition is a proprietary right. the, the, set of code that you have to pay for. They don't make that source code available. Exactly, the management console, um, which allows you to kind of streamline the management of your Hadoop cluster, as opposed to doing it with the open source tools okay. and doing it yourself. Okay, but MapR gets criticized for being proprietary and doesn't isn't Cloudera proprietary? Well, the difference there is you some you know you would argue that the kind of the the core of the Hadoop ecosystem is the file system. Uh, and that's where MapR takes a proprietary approach with their N uh, direct access NFS, which even competitors, I think, would agree, does improve performance significantly um, over HDFS at this point. Removes some of the single point of failure issues, improves performance speed, uh, and, it, and it's also, according to MapR, API compatible, which means while the code isn't open, it is easy to move your data in and out uh, to go from MapR's distribution to someone else if you wanted to. So there's value in that propriety. Oh, there's absolutely value. Um, you know, they're starting to make a little bit of money. They're starting to make some noise. Um, you know, I expect them to. I mean, they have a, a solid, but um, potentially limited business. But but I still think they can they can make some money uh, based around those organizations that are a little bit more mature with Hadoop, that kind of know where they want to go with it, rather than kind of the experimentation phase. Does EMC buy them? Um, they've got a relationship? Or do or you think EMC will go in a different direction? Well, EMC is already, to some degree, going in another direction. They are, um, they've rebranded their uh, MAPR-based distribution to Greenplum MR. And again, they're, they're focusing that on the high-end customers that have very kind of sophisticated big data needs, that know what they want, uh, really, that are really uh, leveraging uh, big data for monetary value now. Okay, so they also have Greenplum HD, which is their enterprise edition. Uh, does not include MapR. So they're hedging all their bets. So, so who's the favorite on the track? Cloudera. I would say Cloudera is the favorite right now among the pure plays for sure. I mean, you've got you've got to consider IBM. Uh, for IBM. Yeah. So of those three. Now let's, let's let's actually before we, we, right, we okay. handicap, let's bring in IBM. Wh wh sure. Where do they fit, um, and are they maybe the the, the, the favorite horse? Well, you, I certainly as the leader in big data. I certainly wouldn't count them out. I mean, uh, the, the one here's what they have a lot of different products that overlap. They've got, I mean, as we mentioned earlier, all the analytic companies that they've acquired over the years. Uh, they've got DB2, uh, the Infosphere warehouse line, uh, Natiza. They've got their own Hadoop distribution and a platform called Big Insights. Um, so they, you know, it can be a little bit confusing when you're trying to, to understand all the options they have. And as I said, they lead with their services business, and they go in, um, unlike someone like, like an Oracle now saying, hey, we've got a big data appliance, easy to understand, similar with EMC. IBM says, well, let's talk about your business problem. What do you need? And then we, yeah. they say, we've got, we've got you covered, but let's figure out what we need. I, I, IBM, didn't IBM outperform Apple uh, last year? At least I, one point in the year. I believe, so, I so, believe you, you, all right, you, you we did, did write about that. Here, so, but so, so last, last question is, sure. if you had a handicap, those four, as the, the leading uh, uh, distributor of, of Hadoop, wh who, who, do you, who do you put in the lead? Uh, right now, I put Cloudera in the lead. My honest opinion is that they will be acquired at some point in the next three to five years. Um, whether who it will be is hard to say, um, but I think this conversation is going to be very different in three years when we're talking about who's leading because we're going to be talking about the mega vendors. Okay, Dave, just some quick news bites from here. The new News Cube will bring you some quick news, news cubes here. Uh, Vanessa Alvarez from Forrester canceled her appearance, so uh, folks, she won't be here. Um, Forrester, not going to have any presence here. Wikibon will cover, carry the load, so we'll, we'll help her out. Uh, Vanessa's a good friend of ours. Uh, other news, Apple is announcing their iPad event on March 7th coming up, um, and so that's going to be a big thing. Obviously, the iPad really represents the future of, of what big data can represent. We saw that at SAP Sapphire. Can you get an iPad 3? Um, I'm definitely getting an iPad 3, for sure. Um, Give the other ones to your kids? <laughs> I already lost that one to my wife yes. and kids. <laughs> and uh, so just, you know, a lot of good stuff going on. Um, here we're seeing uh, a lot of discussion about journalism, uh, mm -hmm. data journalism going on. So obviously, you know, you have your pet little memes floating around here. Obviously, O'Reilly is very academic, very commercial developer kind of mindset. We bring more of the business mojo here with the, with the market share numbers. So, Jeff, thank you very much for that. There's another theme that I wanted to just bring up, and it, and it sort of relates to data, big data. It's really not related to Strata, but you know, there's this hard, hard disk drive shortage. A number of the companies like uh, HP and Dell have indicated that the hard disk drive shortage has, has hurt them, has hurt their supply, they've had to raise prices. My question is, 
What does that do to the cloud? What does that do to Flash? Does it accelerate the adoption of those technologies? And so that's just a theme that has been sort of bouncing around. Well, they had a session here called to. Deep Data, and, and when I looked at the sessions on this one, I thought that um, you know they were good sessions. I noticed they kind of were middle of the road. They weren't as deep. I think you're going to see a different kind of uh, dynamic at the different conferences. Uh, we will be at uh, Hadoop Summit. Um, and you're also going to see HBase conference being put on by Cloudera. So, a lot of great stuff going on, a lot of great news. IBM just cut 1,000 workers. My uh, HP is laying off 250 from their WebOS division. Um, iPad event, whole world's changing. The big guys are retooling. iPad's changing the world. Obviously, data is a big part of that. I believe that big data is a kind of revolution we're going to have seen since the PC. We're going to bring it all to you from SiliconANGLE TV. The 